Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 10 of the subject business law and the topic of discussion is transfer of ownership and performance of contract i am dr rama bansal working as assistant professor at arya college ludhiana and this is a dth swayamprabha mhrd new delhi sponsored project let's start with the topic and what we are going to cover today is the transfer of ownership time when property passes rules regarding the passing of property cif fob and ex ship contracts sale by non owner performance of the contract and at last rules regarding delivery so let's start the topic with the introduction of the transfer of ownership we have already read that the in the contract of sale the property is passes only when the ownership is being transferred so when we talk about the contract of sale it is being performed in two interrelated stages regarding the subject matter of the contract of sale these two stages include one transfer of possession of goods second transfer of ownership of goods what we mean by the possession possession mean possession means the property in good passes to the other party there cannot be a transfer of ownership at the stage here the possession transfer means the possession of goods with the buyer means it may be with the seller even after the sale but when only the goods are being transferred to the buyer means physical possession is being transferred to the other party this is being called as transfer of possession of goods but when we talk about transfer of ownership of goods ownership means the title of the goods the actual ownership of the goods is transferred when to the other party only then the contract of sale gets completed we can read it from here transfer of property means the transfer of ownership of the goods from the seller to the buyer which constitute an ownership in the buyer that means once the goods are being transferred the possession is being transferred and then when the ownership is being transfer is being transferred the buyer finally becomes the owner of the goods so this is the completion stage of the uh, contract of sale now when why we are so concerned that what why we are concerned about the transfer of ownership because the transfer of ownership involves so many questions so many important questions so many important points to be considered in the contract of sale so among all those important points the first important point is the risk of loss because generally in the language of the layman uh, we we generally say only a owner can be responsible for the loss so the same principle applies here in case of contract of sale here when we say the risk of loss passes with the ownership of the goods from the seller to the buyer once the goods ownership is being transferred from the seller side to the buyer side the with the transfer of the ownership the risk of loss also passes to the buyer when we talk about the risk risk means the loss of destruction of goods loss due to any deterioration of the goods when the ownership is being transferred the risk is also transferred means whosoever would be the owner of the goods would be responsible for any kind of loss once the ownership is transferred to buyer only the buyer would be responsible for any kind of loss irrespective of its possession the buyer may or may not be in the possession of goods but he would be responsible for the loss because he is now the owner of the goods that's why we say the transfer of ownership the decision regarding the transfer of ownership is very crucial and is very important let's see the example 
A agrees to purchase B's car for rupees twenty thousand. The ownership is to pass on fifteenth of August two thousand twenty, while the price is paid in advance. On tenth August, the car is damaged in an accident because B has paid for it. So that means now the B, who would be the owner of the goods, have to bear the loss for that. Second is. only owner can sue as we say the the risk of the any loss is of owner so all the suing rights are also concerned with the owner of the particular property that means if any third party causes any kind of loss to the property in that case only the true owner can sue for the legal actions against the third party next is insolvency of buyer or seller if there is a case of insolvency then the goods are to be shifted to the official receiver or we can say any assignee assigned by the court so here the important decision is to whom from whom the official assignee can take the goods we can read it in case of insolvency the question whether the official receiver can take over the property or not depends upon the fact that who has the ownership of the goods at that time if the buyer becomes insolvent and buyer is not yet the owner of the goods the official receiver cannot take the possession of the goods but in its opposite case if the buyer is the owner of the goods the ownership is being transferred at the name of the buyer and the buyer becomes insolvent the official receiver or assignee can take the possession of the goods under him next is suit for price seller can sue for the price only if the good goods have become the property of the buyer till the seller transfers the ownership of the property to the buyer at the name of the buyer he cannot sue the buyer for the recovery of the price so that means suit for price becomes legal only with the transfer of the ownership now we will read time when property passes when we say that the property has passed to the other party so the property may pass from seller to buyer as per the convenience of both the parties that means when both the parties are willing to uh, seller is willing to transfer and buyer is willing to get the property so that would be the right time to transfer the property but even there are certain rules under the sales of goods act 1930 for determining when the property passes in the contract of sale so among that the first is in case of unascertained goods uh, the first of uh, first of all it becomes uh, important to know what are, what are unascertained goods no doubt we have also read it in in the previous lecture but now here also when the goods are not specific when the goods are not ascertained by the buyer or by the seller the goods comes into the category of unascertained goods so a contract to sell unascertained goods is not a complete sale but it's just an agreement to sell because the goods are not being ascertained the goods are not being specifically identified so till then goods are being ascertained it would become it would remain an agreement to sell so ascertainments of a good is a compulsory condition for the passing of the property from seller to the buyer so unless and until the goods are ascertained the property cannot be transferred let's see the example an agreement to sell 50 quintals out of a large quantity of rice in a godown does not make the buyer the owner of anything because there is a large quantity of rice say 500 quintals are available in a godown and the buyer is to just take 50 quintals so which 50 quintal deals with the uh, buyer which 50 quintal are the property of the buyer would not be determined till it is being ascertained so he can become owner of 50 quintals of rice only after this quantity of rice has been separated out from the other rice in the godown so the second point is in case of 
a certain goods if the property which is to be passed is a certain goods so the a certain goods can be transferred at the time when both of the parties are intended for that transferred so it is basically purely depending upon the intention of both the parties of contract of sale that means the buyer and the seller see the example there was a fixed contract for storage of paddy and its subsequent sale the paddy was in the first instance delivered to the defendant for storage and the plaintiff had the option to name a day on which the defendant was to buy here the property in the goods was held not to pass until the option of telling the name of the day has been exercised means once he or the buyer said tell the date and the day on which he wants to take the delivery of the goods it would be as uh, the option would be exercised and it would be complete with the passing of property but in many cases the parties cannot be judged the section 20 to 24 of uh, sales of goods act 1930 deals with it so what are those section let's see till when the specific goods are in the deliverable state so the property cannot be passed even in case of a certain goods uh, if it is not in a deliverable state so what is the meaning of deliverable state means what are the following uh, what are the conditions which contains that when the property can be passed so the contract of sale must be unconditional first of all it must relate to the specific goods and the goods must be in the deliverable state let's see the example mr b offers mr a for his horse rupees 1000 on a month's credit a accepts the offer the horse becomes b's property as soon as the offer is accepted because there is nothing which is to be done to make the goods in a deliverable uh, deliverable state and moreover the goods are the specific goods the horse is a specific one which is to be delivered which is to be passed to the buyer on on uh, accepting the offer when we say that the goods must be in deliverable state so if the goods are not in a deliverable state the buyer is not bound to take the delivery of goods it's very important to know here if the goods are not in a deliverable state buyer cannot be compelled to take the delivery of goods uh, to take the property with him let's see the example a sold a stock of hay lying on his land b on 4th january the price to be paid after a month and the hay stock was to remain on a's land till 1st may so it was also stipulated that no hay was to be cut till the price was paid on the burning of hay stock by fire before the payment of price was made by, made the purchaser b uh, made the purchaser b was held liable for the loss because the property in the hay stock had already passed to him uh, on the day when he had entered into a contract so there the goods are uh, the goods were already in a deliverable state and the contract when the b entered into it the property contains the property already uh, got passed to, to the buyer second when the specific goods are not in a deliverable state so what is the meaning of deliverable state that means if something is yet left to be done on the goods something is left to be done to make the goods uh, to be in the deliverable state so that means something something means like uh, uh, to pack it or to make it in a uh, in a presentable mode or something else is to be done before the delivery of goods let's see the example the contents of a tank of oil were sold the oil was to be filled into drums by the seller and then the drums were to be taken away by the buyer so some of the drums were filled in the presence of the buyer but before the remainder could be filled a fire broke out and the entire quantity of oil was destroyed the buyer must bear the loss of oil which was put into drums and the seller must bear the loss of remainder 
this example clearly mentions that the oil which was put into the drums for the purpose of delivery makes the goods into the deliverable state. So the goods which were in the deliverable state that means they were in they were the property of the buyer and the buyer has to bear the loss for that part and the oil which was still to be filled in the drums that means the owner of the goods was still the seller because the goods were not in a deliverable state and loss for that oil for uh, for that property is to be borne by the seller because of the goods not in the deliverable state third is when goods have to be measured or tested so when the goods are in the deliverable state goods are ready for the delivery the property is ready to pass to the buyer but since some act is to be done by the seller for ascertaining the price such as weighing of the goods such as the measuring of the weight etc so till then it, it is to be done it is it cannot be uh, passed to the buyer let's see the example there was a contract for sale of 975 mounds of rice being the contents of one gola at a certain price mount. The buyer paid the entire price but agreed to remove the rice after weighing the same before a certain date. After delivery was taken of a part of rice, the other part was destroyed. So it was held that the weighing by the buyer was not only for his satisfaction but not necessary for ascertaining the price that the property passed to buyer and he had therefore to bear the loss. Means here the weighing was not a, a required condition for making the goods uh, into the deliverable state. It was just for the satisfaction purpose of the buyer. And, and if, if it was not a required condition, so when the goods were in the deliverable state, it becomes the property of the buyer and in case of any kind of loss, only the buyer would be responsible for that loss as it is being cleared in this example. Next point is unascertain goods and its appropriation. When the goods are unconditionally appropriated to the contract either by the seller with the assent of the buyer or by the buyer with the assent of the seller means mutual consent is required the property in goods passes to the buyer that means when the goods are being appropriated previously goods were unascertain goods but when the goods were appropriated with the mutual consent of buyer and seller it becomes the property of the buyer so the important thing to note here the assent must be given uh, it may be either before the appropriation or after the appropriation it is immaterial but the assent for appropriation must come from both the parties uh, the appropriation of goods must take place before there has been a breach of contract once there is a breach of contract the principle of appropriation of goods doesn't matter Appropriation is generally done by the seller by putting the uh, goods into the required box or into the required bag or into the proper material, packing material. Let's see the example. A had a quantity of sugar in bulk more than sufficient to fill 20 bags. He contracts to sell B 20 bags of it. After the contract, A fills 20 bags with sugar and gives notice to B that bags are ready. B says he will take them as soon as he can by this appropriation by A and assent by B, sugar becomes the property of B. As the point was, the goods should be unascertained. In this example, the sugar was unascertained. It was ascertained with the assent of the buyer, 20 bags were filled with the sugar and bags were ready and this was conveyed even to the buyer and the buyer was to take the uh, delivery of the goods as per his convenience. So once if the goods are being ascertained, mutual consent is there, assent is there, so it becomes the property of the buyer to take the goods. Next point is goods sent on approval or on sale or return. 
that means when goods are transferred on sale or return basis so the seller uh, is to wait for the approval of the buyer to accept the goods but when the buyer doesn't give any kind of approval or acceptance and further transfers the goods to the third party so it shows that there is a automatical uh, automatical approval or acceptance of the goods by the buyer and uh, and one more thing is to be added here if the buyer does not sell the goods to the third parties but retain the goods into his custody without any notice of disapproval so it is again being treated as that means goods are being approved or accepted by the buyer and the notice or the or the intimation regarding the disapproval must be given in a fixed time period say if there is a fixed time period of 3 months or 1 month or 2 month which was according to the terms of the contract the notice regarding the disapproval must be given by the buyer to the seller in that fixed period time and in the contracts where there is no fixed time any reasonable time would be considered as the uh, fixed time period reasonable time will depend upon the nature of the transaction see the example the buyer of a horse on sale or return terms had 8 days in which to return the horse the horse died within 8 days but without his fault means there was no fault of the buyer it was held that the seller could not recover the price of the horse as the property in horse had not yet passed to the buyer that means if the time period of 8 days was there there was a fixed time period to say yes or no for the goods so till the 8 days have not gone and the horse is dead without any fault of the buyer that means the property is still the uh, uh, the ownership of the property is still with the seller so the buyer would not be held responsible for this loss in next example b gave some jewelry to d on sale or return basis b pledged it with a pawnbroker who took it into a good faith but it was held that the pawnbroker became the owner of goods and B could not recover the jewellery from the pawnbroker because by pledging it. D had done an act adopting the transaction. The property in the goods had passed to D. B can sue D only for recovery of price, not for the goods. So here we have done with what are the rules regarding the passing of property what is the meaning of transfer of possession and what is the meaning of transfer of ownership. Now there are a few contracts in which the terms are used CIA, FOB and XSHIP. So what are these kind of contracts? Let's see them in detail. First one is CIF contracts. CIF term stands for cost, insurance and freight. Uh, what are CIF contracts? In these contracts, seller himself has to pay the cost of goods, insurance charges and any kind of freight charges. When the goods are being transferred from seller to buyer, all the charges including cost, insurance and freight uh, are to be borne by the seller. And this price is already being settled in the contract of sale. The parties uh, of the contract decide about the price including all these three things that is cost insurance and freight and these are cif contracts are generally related to the goods related to the contract of sale by the description when the goods uh, may uh, goods are sent on approval or on sale basis the goods may be rejected if on inspection they are uh, discovered that the goods do not respond the goods are not according to sale by description the goods can be rejected but the cost insurance and freight are to be paid by the seller and there there is a specific express contract before the delivery of the goods now uh, in cif contracts there are a few duties of the seller one to make out an invoice of goods sold to ship the goods at the port of shipment, to procure, an, uh, to procure on shipment a contract of arrangement 
under which the goods will be delivered at the destination contemplated by the contract that means it is the responsibility of the seller to deliver the goods at the place where it is to be uh, sent to arrange for an insurance upon the terms current in the trade as i have already told the when the contract of sale is made uh, under the cif contract the insurance terms are also being decided so it becomes the duty of the seller to arrange for the insurance upon the terms which were already decided during the contract to forward and tender to the buyer within a reasonable time all the shipping documents that means the only not only the ownership of the goods but all the shipping documents are to be tendered to the buyer within a reasonable time and it is the prime most duty of the seller the breach of any duty entitles the buyer to repudiate the contract means if the duties which we have read above if any of the duty is not being performed by the seller or the seller is in default any time any duties breach can make the uh, contract repudiated buyer can repudiate the contract on breach of any of the above duties now where there are the duties of the seller there are the duties of buyer too the buyer must pay the price on the presentation of the usual or agreed documents means once the or when once all the documents are being shipped by the seller to the buyer so it becomes the duty of the uh, buyer to pay the price for it in case there is a contract to pay after a certain time the buyer must accept the bill of exchange or the draft when payment is agreed through a banker's credit the buyer must furnish a letter of credit means loc in the favor of the seller and when the duties are payable upon the goods the charges of export duties etc which fall on the seller now is to be uh, if uh, export duties are fall falling on the seller then the import duties are to be paid by the buyer so it becomes the duty of the buyer to pay all these duties now second term which we will use here that is the fob contracts fob full form is free on board which means the seller is to put the goods on a ship at his own expense for carriage to the buyer we means when the goods are being transferred when the property is being transferred if the goods are to be transferred at some distant place that means the goods are bored by the seller and this these goods are to be boarded with the with own expense of the uh, seller the delivery is complete and property and risk in good passes to the deliver that means as and when the delivery is good and the delivery is completed the risk also passes to the buyer and the seller does not insure the good in this and this is a main difference between the cif and fob contracts in fob contracts seller will not insure the goods the insurance of the goods is to be done by the buyer however seller will give the notice of putting the goods on the board before the shipping of the goods and it will intimate the buyer that goods are being shipped so that so that the buyer can insure the goods for uh, for the losses during the transit payment in fob contract become due on the delivery of goods to the ship and the price of the goods includes the cost and all expenses up to delivery on board the ship all these expenses are to be borne by the seller third term is the ex ship contracts ex ship contracts are what are these the seller undertakes to give delivery to the buyer from a ship which has arrived at a port of delivery means the seller undertakes the liability that he would deliver the goods to the buyer which has arrived at a port for the delivery in this case seller has to pay the freight uh, to pay the freight to furnish the goods to the buyer and buyer is not bound to pay any kind of expenses till the delivery is being made to him and the goods would remain at the risk of the seller during the voyage so he has to insure the goods for uh, against any kind of loss in 
transit and the goods does not passes to the until the goods are passes to the buyers goods are transferred to the uh, buyer the all risk of the during the transit and all other risks of the uh, goods will remain with the seller only so up to this we have uh, uh, read that what what are the CIF what are FOB and what are ex ship contracts now we come to the next topic under this that is a sale by non owner normally we say that the person who is the owner of the good can only transfer the goods there is no other person who can transfer the good because that person don't have the better title of the goods than the true owner but when but there are a few cases when the sale can be done by the non owner of the goods and it would be interesting to know what are those persons who can be treated as the uh, the valid sellers section 27 of the sales of goods says goods act says a uh, legal maxim that is the nemo dat quid not habit which means that no one can pass a better title than the seller himself so but the rule why why we say that because only the true owner can transfer the goods and the fact of an innocent and bona fide purchaser from the non owner if any person who don't have the good title of the uh, goods transfer the goods to the buyer and the other person have taken those goods in the good faith and have paid for the goods that would be considered as a valid sale let's see an example a horse was sold at a public auction the horse was stolen but one the auctioneer had no knowledge of that fact the buyer bought it in the good faith it was held that the buyer had obtained no title against the true owner when a person transfers article not belonging to him and the transferee gets no title because if even if he has bought the goods in the good faith and have paid for the goods means the other person would not get the true title of the goods let's see the example a horse was sold at a public auction the horse was stolen but a stolen one but the auctioneer had no knowledge of that fact the buyer bought it in a good faith it was held that buyer had obtained no title against the true owner that means only a true owner of the goods can have the better title than anyone else in the world but there are a few exceptions to the rule means there are a few cases where a non owner can sell the goods and this uh, sale can be a valid sale so let's read the exceptions to the rule the first exception is sale by a mercantile agent under section 27 when a good is being sold by the mercantile agent because the mercantile agent is not a true owner of the good but even then this sale is considered as a valid sale but this exception will hold good if the following conditions are satisfied one the person making the sale must be a mercantile agent he must be in a possession of the goods or the documents of the goods or the title of the goods and he must sell the good with the consent of the true owner he is not selling the lost goods he is not selling the, uh, the theft goods he is selling the goods with the consent of the true owner and he is doing this sale in the ordinary course of business this is not an unusual transaction this is being done in the ordinary course of business and the buyer must act in the good faith and him that's by acting in the good faith the buyer is purchasing the articles buyer should not have any intimation at the time of contract that the sale notice that the agent has no authority to sell the goods if any such notice or any such information is available with the buyer and even then he buys the goods this exception would not hold true second non owner is sale under the implied authority of the owner or title by estoppel it is also covered under section 27 where first of all we need to know what is the title by estoppel if someone tries to convince other party that he is the true owner 
if someone tries to convince the buyer that seller the the person who is saying this is a true owner by his conduct or by his words that means this is title by estoppel so and the most important thing in this is the person should say, tell this to induce the buyer to buy that particular article if the motive is different this may be the some other case but if someone is by words or by his behavior convincing or inducing the person to buy a particular article that means he is working as he has a title by estoppel let's see the example a the owner of a wagon allowed one of his employees b to have his name painted on it he did so for the purpose of inducing the public to believe that property belong to b c purchased the wagon from b in good faith c acquires a good title and a is stopped from denying b's authority to sell so as we can see in this example b is using the authority of a and the purpose is to induce the public to purchase that thing and c has under the effect of title by estoppel has uh, taken the delivery of the wagon and this would be treated as a valid sale third non owner is sale by one of the joint owners we can assume that a particular article belongs to more than one person there are joint owners of a particular article this is being covered under section 28 so for this application the following conditions must be satisfied so among the conditions the first condition is one of the joint owners must be in the sole possession of the goods the buyer should purchase the goods in good faith and the joint owner must be in a position by uh, must be in a possession of goods with the permission of all the co-owners and the buyer should not have any kind of notice or intimation that the seller has no authority to sell the goods so if all these conditions are being satisfied and goods are being sold by one of the joint owners it would be treated as a valid sale let's see the example a d and c are joint hindu brothers who own certain cattle in common b and c leave the cow in the possession of a which sells to t t makes the purchase in the good faith so the property in cow is transferred to t because it is being done with the uh, permission of the co-owners and the buyer don't have any kind of notice that he don't have authority to sell he has purchased in a good faith all the conditions are being fulfilled so it would be considered as an valid sale next sale by a person in possession of goods under a voidable contract section 29 says that if a person is in a possession of goods under a voidable contract which he has not resigned it can transfer a good title to the buyer means voidable under a voidable contract a person a party has always the choice to resign the contract but once he has not resigned the contract and if he performs the uh, contract it would be a valid contract and in case of sale it would be treated as a valid sale this exception is limited only up to section 19 and 19a of the contract act which means that the the contract should be voidable only on the basis of coercion fraud misrepresentation and under the undue influence except these four cases the contract should not be a voidable contract and in case of void contracts uh, if the innocent buyer purchase the goods uh, it would not make him a true owner of the goods let's see the example a by misrepresentation induces b to sell and deliver to him a horse he sells the horse to c before b has resigned the contract the property in the horse is transferred to c and this would be considered as a valid contract but for this the following conditions must be satisfied one the goods must be in the possession of the buyer the seller must be in possession of goods under a voidable contract the important fact uh, here is that the contract should be a voidable contract 
and the contract should not be resigned till the time of the sale buyer must purchase the goods in the good faith and the most important the seller's the title should not be a defective title and it should not be without the notice of the original seller let's see the example a fraudulent person posed himself to be a respectable person and obtained from a shopkeeper a valuable ring by giving a worthless check to him before the fraud could be discovered the cheat has pledged the ring with a bona fide pledge who it was held obtained a good title because the contract becomes the voidable once it is being done under the fraud and all other conditions that means buyer has taken in the good faith and the goods were in the possession of the buyer so it will make the contract a valid contract next sale by non owner covers sale by seller in possession after sale that means we generally know ki once the goods are being sold it is being transferred to the buyer but sometimes it remains in the possession of the seller but once the goods are in the possession of seller the seller may further sell them to the third party because at that time the seller is not a true owner of the goods but even though thus the sale made by the seller would be considered as a valid sale uh it is also important to note here that it is not necessary that seller should be in the possession of goods he may be in the possession of the documents of the title and even even this is a sufficient reason to sell to sell the goods to the third party it is enough if he even if he has the control over the goods or so as to transfer possession of making over a document title or possession of goods is not a must condition here see the example a sold certain goods to b but continued to remain in possession thereof with the consent of the buyer he subsequently resold the goods to another person it was held that second purchaser had acquired a good title that means the seller has sold the goods to the third party with the consent of the buyer it may be in the condition when the buyer is not in a position to pay for the goods or something else next sale by non owner covered sale by a buyer in possession after sale section 30 subsection 2 covers it a buyer having the possession of goods or documents of title of the goods can sell them to a bona fide transferee buyer further can sell the goods to the uh, some bona fide transferee but this exception would not apply if the buyer is not in a possession of goods the mandatory condition here is the buyer should be in the possession of goods but the following conditions must must also be satisfied for this section to be applied here the first buyer is in a possession of goods with the consent of the seller transfer is by the buyer or by a mercantile agent acting for the buyer and the we we can make it more clear by the example mr b agreed to buy a car if his solicitor approved b obtained possession of car and sold the same to c but the solicitor later on disapproved the transaction it was held that the title has already passed to the c it would be considered as a valid sale sale by an unpaid seller unpaid seller is a person who has not been paid that means the he has sold the goods he wants to transfer the ownership of the goods but the buyer has not paid the seller in that case the person it would be known as the unpaid seller so uh, the unpaid seller has always the right of lien right of lien means to keep the goods with himself for further selling or to stop the goods in transits to resell them to the some other owner sale in market overt this rule is applicable in england but not in india in 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 english law uh, in, in uh, according to english law what happens a person can't make a valid sale of goods that do not belong to him is to be bound in case of sales made in market overt market overt is what it means sale at certain place and at certain time when the mar- when the sale is done in the market overt the buyer acquires a good title of the goods but the mandatory condition is buyer must 
परचेज द गुड्स इन द गुड फेथ नेक्स्ट इज एक्सेप्शन अंडर अदर एक्ट्स लाइक अंडर सेक्शन वन सिक्सटी नाइन ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड द फाइंडर ऑफ लॉस गुड्स इज नॉट अ ट्रू ऑनर ऑफ द गुड्स बट कैन सेल द गुड्स फॉर री इम्बर्समेंट ऑफ द एक्सपेंसिस इन इन केस वैन ही डोंट फाइंड द ट्रू ऑनर अंडर सेक्शन वन सेवेंटी सिक्स ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट अ पानी ऑफ गुड्स हैज द पार टू सेल द गुड्स पॉन्ड अंडर हिम फॉर री इम्बर्समेंट ऑफ द एक्सपेंसिस अ स्पेशल पार ऑफ सेल इज गिवन टू ऑफिसर्स ऑफ कोर्ट लिक्विडेटर्स ऑफ कंपनी रिसीवर्स ऑफ इंसॉलवेंट्स एस्टेट कस्टम ऑफिसर्स फॉर ड्यूटीज रिमेनिंग अनपेड दैट मीन्स इफ एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर इज बींग रिमेन अनपेड बाय द बाय द पर्सन कंसर्न इन दैट केस ऑल द कोर्ट ऑफिसर्स ऑफ कोर्ट और और द रिसीवर्स ऑफ इंसॉलवेंट एस्टेट और कस्टम ऑफिसर्स कैन सेल द गुड्स इवन दो दे आर नॉट द ट्रू ऑनर ऑफ द गुड्स बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज एंड नेगोशिएबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल a thief or finder of such instrument uh, if founds it uh, if people or to bearer or endorsed in a blank can give a good title to a bona fide purchaser for value without any notice because this these are the negotiable instrument this is the property of the person who found them so all these are the persons all these are the eight cases or eight exceptions in which a sale by non owner is treated as a valid sale next we come to the another part of the uh, discussion that is the performance of the contract when we say that the contract is being performed uh, we know delivery of goods and payment of price are the concurrent conditions when the seller transfer the goods to the buyer there is a concurrent condition that the buyer would pay for the goods that means with the selling of the goods with the with the transfer of the ownership of the goods the other part the other responsibility of the buyer is to pay for those goods so these are the concurrent conditions when we say delivery delivery means the voluntary transfer of the possession from one person to the another delivery of goods is always a bilateral act in which both of the parties perform their part it requires always two parties to act one is the buyer second one is the seller and uh, and when we talk about the delivery the essential elements of the delivery are a person has possession of the goods he transfer that possession to the another another person and he is delivering the goods voluntarily he is not doing under any legal obligations what are the various modes available for delivery one is the delivery can be physical or the actual delivery when the goods are being really transferred in the physical form to the other party this is being known as the physical or the actual delivery second is a symbolic delivery symbolic delivery is not a actual delivery it is not being done in the actual manner it is done in the symbolic manner when the goods are of bulky type when the goods are of heavy in nature and when 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 uh, it's not possible to deliver the goods to the third party physically the the seller is incapable of making the actual delivery the symbolic delivery is being done see in case of the uh, when the goods are in the go down and it's not possible to shift the goods from the go down to the other person the seller can give the keys of the go down this is called as symbolic delivery or any kind of transfer paper or documents can be transferred to the other party so uh, without the physical uh, possession of the goods it is being done symbolically this is known as the symbolical uh, symbolic delivery third one is the constructive delivery a delivery is constructive when it is made without any change in the actual possession of the goods goods remain at the same place but when this is being being delivered to the other person without any change in the physical possession of the goods this is called as constructive delivery 
there is only an acknowledgement by the person in possession that he holds them on behalf of another means if person a was having the goods earlier now the goods are being delivered to person b without making any actual possession and the other person b acknowledging about the delivery of the goods this this can be called as the valid constructive delivery constructive delivery gives a legal change only a change in the legal character of the possession of the goods not the physical possession and the constructive delivery can take place in the following manners one seller as the bailee of the buyer after sale and a warehouse man who holds the goods as a bailee for seller before sale and bailee of buyer after sale uh, if we make it more clear if there is let's suppose the goods are being kept into the warehouse and the the person who was employed as a warehouse man was uh, having the goods was taking care of the goods on behalf of seller be, uh, seller before and after making the constructive delivery now he has become the bailee of the buyer and he is doing the same job but before the transfer of the goods he was doing this job for the seller now he is doing this job for the buyer what are the rules regarding the delivery of the goods one mode of delivery under section 33 a seller must put the goods not only out of the possession but into the possession of the buyer it's very important uh, it is not uh, only enough that seller is delivering the goods till the goods are in the possession of the buyer it is the responsibility of the seller to make the uh, delivery possible a delivery to anyone other than the buyer is counted as insufficient act that means if the seller says i have delivered the goods to whom he has delivered to whom his agent has delivered the goods it is if it is not known it is not a sufficient condition for the valid delivery in actual delivery there is a rule that the delivery must be made to either buyer or his agent and uh, the, the the delivery may be the actual delivery symbolic delivery or the constructive delivery it doesn't make any difference but the delivery should be given to the buyer or his authorized agent let's see the example b sells a horse and permits it to be removed from a stable to b's the removal to b's b's stable is a delivery second point is delivery and payment are concurrent conditions which is covered under section 32 as i have already said in the previous slides that once the delivery of the goods is being made the payment of the good is the concurrent condition which is the responsibility of the buyer let's see the example mr a and mr b contact with each other that mr a shall deliver goods to mr b to be paid for by mr b on delivery mr a need not deliver the goods unless mr b is ready and willing to pay for the goods on delivery mr b need not pay for the goods unless mr a is ready and willing to deliver them on payment that means if both of the parties if any of the party is not willing to perform his part the delivery of the goods is not possible it 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 would not amount to a valid contract so that means delivery and payment are concurrent conditions if effective part delivery section 34 if a part of the goods is being transferred to the other party that means the whole good is not being transferred it is being called as the part delivery let's see the example a sells 50 mounds of rice to b the rice remains in a's warehouse after the sale b sell to c 10 mounds of rice and and a at b's desire sends the 10 mounds to c this has got the legal effect of a delivery of the whole next condition is buyer to apply for delivery under section 35 the seller without the application of the buyer for delivery the goods for delivery of goods is not bound to deliver the goods that means seller has no obligation to deliver the goods till the buyer applies for the delivery of the goods that means buyer if the seller do not deliver without asking of the buyer the buyer cannot take any action against the seller 
means the buyer is to apply for delivery under section 35 or sales of goods act 1930 only then the seller is bound to deliver place of delivery under section 36 uh, the place normally is being determined by an agreement between the parties at the time of the contract but if there is any kind of, uh, if, if there is absence of any, any place or absence of any, any terms regarding the place of the contract, it can be goods are to be delivered at the place at which they are at the time of sale. Suppose Mr. A is selling the goods from his warehouse, so the place of delivery would be the warehouse of A. That means where the goods were at the time of the sale or at the place at which they are at the time of agreement to sell. That means if the goods are the contract is not of sale, the contract is of agreement to sell. So that means uh, the place at which the agreement to sell is being done would be the place of delivery. If the goods are in existence, they are to be delivered at the place where they are to be manufactured or produced. This is true in the case of the future goods. That means goods are not uh, available at the present time. It would be produced or it would, it would be manufactured in the future time. If say if we uh, contract about any kind of crop, any kind of tree which is to be, uh, to be in appearance in the future. So that means when it would come into existence, the place at which it would come into existence or any other thing when it would be manufactured or it would be produced, the place at which it would be available would be the place of delivery. Next point is time of delivery. Normally it is delivered within a reasonable time. So what is the definition of the reasonable time? It would depend upon the nature of the contract, nature of the articles to be delivered. But in case of any, uh, any uh, presence of the contract regarding the time of delivery, the time would be a reasonable time. Or if there is a contract uh, in which the time of delivery is being mentioned, it would be before the expiry of that fixed period. Next point is regarding manner of delivery. Manner of delivery means how the delivery would be made. Basically, if the goods are in the possession of the third person, that means there is no delivery by seller to buyer unless such third person acknowledges to the buyer that he holds the good on his behalf. The transfer of any document operates as delivery even where the goods are in the possession of third party. Let's suppose goods are not available with the seller, they are in the possession of the third party. So once the title of the goods, the uh, documents of the goods are being transferred, so this is the right condition. Next is expenses of delivery, means when the goods are being transferred, who has to bond the expenses of delivery? So the, the important thing to note here is that uh, to make the goods into a deliverable state till that situation whatever the expenses are being done these expenses are to be borne by the seller. But once the goods are made into a deliverable state it is being put into the uh, uh, ship. Uh, the goods are ready for shipment and after that any expenses, any incidental expenses to receive the delivery are to be borne by the buyer only. Next installment deliveries, section 38 gives the light for this, means in, in case of any absence of agreement to contrary, the buyer is not bound to accept the delivery by installments, means he can always deny that he would not accept the goods in installments, the whole of the things must be delivered in a one go. But if there is any, any agreement to that, any agreement to contrary, the provisions can be followed by the buyer and the seller. And moreover, if the seller is willing to deliver the goods in installments, he can take the consent of the buyer. That means with the mutual consent, this can be delivered. The goods can be delivered in the installments. Let's see the example. There was a sale of 25 tons of paper to be shipped in November. The seller shipped 20 tons in November and 5 tons in December. Means there is a 
delivery in installments the buyer was entitled to reject the whole 25 tons because uh, it is done without the mutual consent without the uh, consent of the buyer and uh, this whole contract can be uh, terminated by the buyer next point is delivery of wrong quantity if in any case seller has delivered the wrong quantity or the wrong or any kind of uh, wrong quality to the buyer the buyer is in a position to resign whole the whole of the contract a defective delivery and the title of uh, title the buyer can also reject the goods section 37 deals with it and provides the three different cases under this one the delivery of the quantity less than the contracted for that means if the buyer has called for 100 units the any amount less than the 100 unit would be counted as the wrong delivery delivery of a quantity more than the contracted for any quantity more than the 100 unit in our example would be considered even as the delivery of the wrong quantity delivery of goods contracted for along with goods not of the goods uh, contract description means if the goods doesn't match with the goods of the description it would be even called as a delivery of wrong quantity and quality delivery to carrier or harfinger section 39 says ki when the seller has given the goods to the carrier for the purpose of the transmission of the goods to the buyer it is a prima facie event prima facie uh, that that is deemed to be the delivery of the goods to the buyer that means it is equally good as if the goods were sent to the buyer when the carrier uh, the goods were given to the carrier when when he was entrusted with the goods becomes in the eyes of the law because the carrier now would uh, would roll as the bailey of the goods and he is the uh, working he is working on the behalf of the buyer so that's why it would be considered as a valid delivery goods delivered at a distance plate if the seller agrees in a contract that he would deliver the goods at some distant place which is far away from his own own place so the seller would be responsible for the delivery of the goods he has to take the goods to that place at his own risk that means all the all the all the things are to be taken care of taken care by the seller but the buyer should also take risk of the natural deterioration of the goods during the transit let's see let's take the example if the uh, if the if there is a contract of the coal when the coal is to be delivered at some distant place so there would be some kind of uh, um, natural loss of coal during the transit so that loss is to be bear by the buyer only examining the goods on delivery normally buyers has to take care of the goods he has to take the examination of the goods when the goods are delivered to him but when the buyer has taken the goods without any previous examination it does not amount to an acceptance until buyer had a sufficient examination of the goods but once the buyer has taken the examination of goods if now in can, in uh, in case of any kind of loss seller would not be responsible for the goods means the whole responsibility of the goods after examination would lie with the buyer buyer not bound to return rejected goods when the goods are sent on sale or return basis section 43 of the sales of goods act say that if the buyer refuses to accept the goods he is not bound to return the goods to the seller it is sufficient if he intimates that he is not taking the goods he is rejecting the goods it is the responsibility of the seller to take the goods back to him when acceptance is complete on delivery section 42 explains it that the buyer is deemed to have accepted the goods in the following cases one once he intimates that i am accepted the i am accepting the goods the goods are being accepted or when the goods are delivered and buyer does not give any reaction any comment or any kind of intimation in relation of the goods that means the seller should assumes that the goods are being accepted where the buyer retain the goods without beyond a reasonable time 
that means if there was some fixed time or in absence of fixed time the reasonable time when the buyer retain the goods with him after the even beyond the reasonable time it is a intimation uh, that the goods are being accepted see the example where the buyer took delivery of wheat and sold a part of it and afterwards found that wheat was not of contract quality hence rejected the delivery so it was held that he has lost the right of rejection as he has accepted the wheat by dealing further transaction it's a implied acceptance on the part of the buyer when he sold the goods further to the third party that he has accepted the goods liability of buyer for neglecting or refusing delivery of goods if once the buyer is saying that he is not taking the delivery uh, means when the delivery was not made in a reasonable time the buyer can refuse the delivery of the goods but the uh, but but it should be in a reasonable time and then the buyer becomes liable to the seller for any loss occasioned by his neglect or refusal to take delivery a reasonable charge for the care and custody of the goods the seller should be entitled to exercise the above rights even though it amounts to a repudiation of the contracts let's make it more clear with the help of the example if mr a agrees to sell a car to mr b and he tenders the car to mr b who refuses to take delivery now later on if mr a sells car to somebody else and incurs a loss he is entitled to claim damages from mr b the my previous buyer that means the buyer has the liability if he is refusing for the delivery of the goods or he is neglecting the delivery of goods so till now we have covered with the whole topics which we were expected to do that means we have covered till now the transfer of ownership and we have also made the differentiation here between the transfer of possession and transfer of ownership what are the rules regarding when the property passes to the buyer what are the rules regarding uh, that and uh, next we have done with the cif contracts fob contracts and ex ship contracts who is liable for cif who is liable for fob and ex ship contracts then uh, the sale by non owner in which we have discussed uh, we know that the sale is considered valid when made by the original owner but in few cases there are exceptions when the sale is being made by the non owner even then this is counted as a valid sale next we have done with the performance of the contract when we say the contract is being performed and what are the various rules regarding the delivery of the goods from the buyer to seller here both buyer and seller have their different duties and their different rights regarding the delivery of goods this is all with today's lecture so we come to the end of the lecture on the topic transfer of ownership and performance of contract thank you so much